Hospital Port has pride and dignity. Stop the New World Order. Welcome to Panmo TV. Welcome to Oxford once again. Now, um, I don't know when you'll be watching this uh, exactly, but uh, for me, it's the morning after the Mark Devlin tour. Uh, it went really well last night, so thanks to everyone who turned up. Brilliant event. And now, literally just eight hours later, I'm off again. I'm... Uh, well, a bit more than eight hours, actually, but I'm, I'm off. I'm going on another adventure. I'm actually going to the ancient site of Avebury. I don't know if... Have I ever been there with a Panmo TV before? I'm not sure. Uh, I, oh, in 2010, yeah, in the, um, on the tour. We didn't stop there, but we went through it. On the, on the uh, Glastonbury Symposium tour, I went there. That was a long time ago. Now, 14 years later, I'm going back again. It's a lovely morning. Still quite cold, but the river is beautiful. It's beautiful in this morning sunshine. All the tower is glistening. And now, uh, so really, you couldn't, you couldn't ask for better, a better day to go out into the countryside. Okay, we're near Oxford Station now. That's Oxford Station. I don't know what's going on here, but. Uh, I think they discovered a crashed UFO and they're trying to dig it up. Only kidding. It's, it's built, been building work going on here now for about a year. It's still going on now. Anyway, the only way to get through to Botley, this is the only way in all of Oxford you can actually get through to Botley. In other words, that connects the east of the city to the west. It's this little tunnel here. So <coughs> we're going to go into this. It's, only, it's not very long, but... Um, yeah, I don't know how long it's going to last. I say it's been going on for a year now. This road's been shut. The the bus stop, the, I've got to get a bus, but the bus I have to get is actually in a different place to where it normally is because of all this engineering work. It doesn't go from Gloucester Green anymore. It actually goes from Mosley Island. Look at that. Spire again. Don't know if you, so I'm talking it's about my graffiti video. I don't know if you've seen those. But... Uh, Yes, it no longer goes to. It no longer goes from Gloucester Green. I've got to go all the way to Osney Island. So uh, let's just hope there's no more. There's no real mishaps. Well, well I've made it. I'm, I'm on the bus. I've decided, I mean, I'm, my first stop is to go to Swindon. Now, as you know, if you watch regularly, you'll know that I normally get the train to Swindon. I've decided to get the bus this time because I've got, oh, for three reasons. Firstly, I've got more time uh, to get to where I have to go. I don't have to rush. Secondly, buses are cheaper. Thirdly, they're far more reliable than the train. So I'm going to do that. So uh, it's quite a long bus journey, actually. It's like, uh, it's the kind of, um, <coughs> it's the kind of journey that a few years ago would have been done by a coach, but they're like, they're replacing all the coaches with the buses, like the X5 to Milton Keynes. It's no longer a coach, it's now a bus. No toilet, you know, no seat belts, nothing like that. So, um, and these, these sorts of seats. But, uh, anyway, I don't mind. I'm an ex-hospital porter. I don't, I don't seek luxury. <coughs> look at that, wow, look. Look at that door and a window. See, the, just see how uh, they were sort of built at street level? That's Tartarian. I was actually quite surprised, actually. Um, there's quite a lot of Tartarian architecture in this town of Farringdon. Um, and um, you, you, can quite, you can get it quite often, actually. It's, it's quite, in, in most places have them. Um, you'll get like a, quite a really old building, and you'll see what you just saw. There's like a window built, for some reason, is built at street level, and half of it is like underground, or a door which is sort of like half underground, half above ground. Um, I don't have time to go into details now, but it's all to do with Tartaria and the mud flood and things like that. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how much of that I believe, but there's something to it. There's definitely something to it. That has to be. Okay. I think the bus is going to pause here for a moment. It, it waits here. It says, uh, it actually said Farringdon for Swindon on the front. I thought that meant we had to change buses, but I don't think we do. I think if we stay here... We should be able to get to. We should be able to get to Swindon. Well, uh, welcome to Swindon. 
it's really bitterly cold here. I almost think it's cold everywhere. Um, I should have brought my winter jacket. Um, I've got a short wait here now. There's a bit of people who want to get to the front. I'm at the back. So, I'm here anyway. Then, uh, Swindon. Swindon. The name means Town of the Pigs. Is that good or bad? I'm not going to be along anyway. Oh, I'm finally reading, I'm finally finishing this book. Um, do you remember, I actually, actually went to a, the launch of that book months ago. I made a video about it. Um, I'm now on the bus, number 49 bus, um, to Avebury. Uh, the weather unfortunately is deteriorated, it's now raining as well as being cold. But, uh, yeah, that's part of living in England. Fun. It's actually nice to be on the on the bus where it's actually a bit warm. Because, um, they, we were standing there for ages and everyone was complaining because the bus was like parked up and the driver was there. He could have just driven over and let any, everyone on board. But nah, he had to, he had to stay there. So. But anyway, um, this is actually a lovely bus journey. Yes, it really is. Um, if ever you're coming this way, I really do recommend going by bus. Um, and get in there, get, get there early so you can get a front seat. Well, obviously, when the weather's nicer than this, it's, it's better. And, um, and you get this, it's the most beautiful view here. You've seen me do it with Colin in the car, you know. We've gone this way together. Oh, Colin is not going to be at this event, unfortunately. Okay, I'm here at this at Avery. There's the famous Red Lion pub. And it's, uh, oh, I'm back. It's, uh, yeah, I was thinking about when the last time was I came here. I actually came here not just on the, not just like to drive through like we did in 2010, but actually came here and actually spent some time here. And the answer is 2009. I don't know because I had a reminder on Facebook about it. Um, because it was eight years, <laughs> funny, for some reason it was eight years ago I published the photos of me at Avebury, or the first one of the photos of me at Avebury, and I remember very well because I was sitting in that beer garden over there. I cross over the roads. You've got to watch your step along here because there's no crossing or anything. It's, it's an entire road, a main road, goes through this sacred site, and um, an entire road drives through this, and there's no crossings. It's got a. It's really quite treacherous splits the entire site in half of course there's a village that's in the middle of it um anyway i know where i've got to get my bus back if, if I, i'm not sure exactly wh whether, when i'm going back or in which direction when i leave avery um but so i'll tell you more later but the actual what's happening today is not entirely certain but anyway um here's the uh Helping ensure the survival of Avery's mistress another 6,000 years. To assist with the erosion and control of the banks are temporarily closed. The banks in the sector. I don't know if that means we can walk all the way around. Let's cross over anyway. Because normally I like, I like to walk around. I'm sitting in this beer garden here. Um, and, um, I'm, and the guy came up to me, long head, the microphone, saying, could I, could you like to be on my Shamanic Freedom Radio podcast? And it was actually Niall Murphy. That's when I first met Niall Murphy. Um, I remember it well, and he, he did like a little talk. Shamanic Freedom Radio is now gone, but um, there's no Shamanic Freedom Radio anymore. But there is, uh, he's got something called Through an Opaque Lens. And you know about that. I mean, I, my, Niall's been on this channel. So I've met him several times since, I've been in touch with him. I'm now going to... Oh, toilet, that's useful. It's in there somewhere, that's good, that's useful, to know. And I'm just going to go up and walk and have a look at the stones and, and the circle and the, and the, the henge. Um, it's nice to walk all the way around the edge of the edge, actually, because... Um, go along here. Sorry, sorry. There'll be a bit of wind. I'll try and point the camera at myself just so you can hear me. See, it's, 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 it's one of those treacherous roads going through it all the time. I came here in 2003. There was um, 
That's for in, I was on February the 1st, it was for the Inbox, the Inbox celebration. And um, I came with my hippie friend, or well, no, sorry, pseudo friend. Yeah, I mean, if you're ever, you know, if, you, if, you, if, I was, if I was ever interviewed by the big issue, you know, if you ever read the big issue, they have a segment, they interview somebody, a famous person usually, and um, they have this segment in it which says, um, a letter to your younger, your younger self. What advice would you give your younger self? Well, mine would be very much, be careful who you make friends with. Just because, a, just because a person says, oh, I'm your friend, Ben, I'm your friend, doesn't mean that they are. Judge a person by their actions. And not by just what they say. That. So if they say, oh, I'm your friend, Ben, I'm your friend, and, they, and their behaviour is the exact opposite, they're not your friend. They are not your friend. And this is, whenever I think of that, I always think of this person. This person I knew who was a, a hippie woman, an old, a, an old hippie, well she was about to be an older hippie woman. Um, we were never a couple or anything, but we were quite close platonic friends or pseudo friends at one point, but uh, yeah, anyways, she brought me here. So this to the Imbolc celebration. I was just gonna let these people through first. So, uh, and I remember well, it was 2003 that was. It was the day that the space shuttle crashed. The space shuttle Columbia, when it, it came down, crashed. Um, this was someone, it was someone announced it. And here we are. This, this, this is an enormous, an enormous place. I mean, it's, it's, can, oh, well, uh, we're here a week now. There's more about this. No, um, look at this. These are the monoliths, these megaliths. Um, I like to come here and just walk around here just to try and just ground myself and try and get to the end of the place. Um, I find a comfy place in this old tree. It's a my hands are cold, my hands are freezing. The weather is it's sort of squally showers at the moment, there's more rain coming. That's why I've got my waterproof on. Look at this. Hello fella. Yeah. This is like this was built by the the same culture that built Stonehenge. site was built. Can you imagine this? Like, without the village in the middle of the roads, this whole area, probably cleared of grass, just white chalk. These banks, probably higher and smoother, and these stones much smoother. This was like a temple. Who knows what? I mean, we don't know enough about the, the religious beliefs of the culture that built this. We don't know enough about their religious beliefs. But there's, uh, these things have astronomical alignments. Things like that. They've been weathered enormously by age. A lot of these were just dug up from the ground because they were just, they've been knocked over and buried. John Stewart preserved a lot of this when the stones were broken up from the materials. Just imagine what it would look like. Who knows what this is? Who knows? I mean, just goes to show, doesn't it? Gives you a taste of gives us a taste of what our pre-illuminati ancestors were like. Well, you'd be glad to know that this Buddha component is not going to be as long as the last one. Of what 
kind of and I've been lost. How separated we live from the two thousand years of Britain's case under Illuminati rule have had to endure. After two thousand years, is there anything left of us of what we were? Boudicca's people did not, contrary to popular belief, did not construct these, explicitly this monument for her. Did she ever walk here and see this? For her, it would have been an ancient, it would also have been ancient history, as it was for us. Three thousand years, well, three to four thousand years in her case, instead of the five to six thousand years for us. These markers here, these, these little small obelisks, these they're like flat obelisk shaped structures, uh, they mark where there were stones, which Stukely couldn't save, the ones that were broken up. But see, we knew where it was, we knew enough about what was here to be able to, re, to reconstruct reconstruct it and as long as that past remains we have hope we have hope so um yeah i came here in 2009 and um I came here, we, we camped out, I was actually kind of a meet-up for the David Icke Forum, because David Icke was here, and the video was made, and the video I think is still available. Uh, you can see it in various places, I think maybe on YouTube, which was basically a public event here, David, um, of involving the, um, the David Icke Forum, the, the people who... Stop filming for a moment, should I get through this gate? Hen shop, that's where we're going later. Um, this little village is quite high. So sorry, the the, the lead cover's down. So, that's the hen shop where we're gonna go later. Um whoops, can you see it there? And um I'm now uh, just walking through this nice little village here. It's, it's a sweet little village. And um, it's like really, like a quite normal village really, sitting in the middle of this ancient monument. And we come down here, this one here. Because I, uh, what happened was, in, we came in 2009, David Icke held an event here. It was actually at the northeast of the monument. I'll show you that later. In fact, I might go down here. Well, I'll show you something first. And, um, and so we all went, we all came up here, it was actually the summer solstice in 2009. And um, so I came, I, met all, I came up here with Sue Stain, we were still a couple. And um, we, we went to the northeast of the monument, which I'll show you later. And where David did a little talk, which was filmed, and he was there. But before that we had a wander around the village with a few pints in the old red line. And we came to this church. We came up to this church, we thought we'd go in and have a look at this church. The church is interesting actually because the, there's a few architectural anomalies which I can show you, well, I'll put over here in a minute, actually, I might have a chance to show you actually. We were going to go into the church and have a look at it, but we never got the chance because we found this guy lying in the porch, which I'll show you in a minute, and we thought, oh, he's just fallen asleep, and we suddenly realised he was dead. And um, so, we called the police, and the police came along, and, well, basically, we had to, the time, we were going to spend a lot of time with David, and anyway, some of us, those, well, a few of us had to go and, because I was the one who sort of went forward and checked he was still alive or dead, I checked his pulse and everything, because I was being a hospital for those days. Anyway, listen, um, um, I went and I was sort of the one who drew the short straw, in that sense. A lot of these old churches have these little porticos, these little gates. And so we go in here. This is classic church Avery. 
And so I had to spend an hour being interviewed. Me and me and another guy had to spend a whole hour being interviewed by the police. The police, police woman came along and, and she had to, had to sit down and make a statement. And she she was really annoyed. She said, oh, "I was hoping, I was hoping to spend the day wandering around talking to people. You know, policing these events is great fun." They said, "I have to sit here for an hour and look at a report like this." More paperwork when I didn't expect any. She was annoyed as well, this police lady. And um, in the end, I had a few, a few couple of months later, I had to attend a coroner's court in Marlborough. So there you go. Yeah, it was here. This is the church. It's a really old church. I say it's very unusual in many ways. This church. I, sh I might get the chance to go in and show you. But anyway, this is it. Yeah. Um, this was the place. There's a guy lying dead here in the porch. I remember. That was a sh I remember that very well. Um, it seems somehow portentous because one of the guys we were with, um, who'd come to the forum meetup, he was actually dating one of the other forum members. A couple of months later, he died. Quite suddenly, he was quite young as well. Strange that. Here it is. I feel like I feel the need to whisper. I'm not a religious man, but I feel the need to whisper in here to show reverence. I should have taken my hat off. I'm like like that church I went to, I showed you on the Isle of Man. This one has had to adapt. It's become a kind of community centre and there's some, there's some pictures of ch children made as well. See so all these things here. Very cute. Granddad and family, isn't that lovely? Angel. Nice. Apparently, according to Percy and Bennett, if you've actually watched the, I don't know if you can still get it, the, um, it's called uh, The Avery Connection or something like that. Um, this font is at a tangent to the centre of the church. Now, um, this is the font where they baptise the babies. Hazard. Right. It's actually not at a tangent though, it's, it looks to be right in the middle. According to them it's at a tangent. Maybe, maybe it was a different church, maybe I'm getting confused. It was actually a different church they were talking about. Anyway. Part of the Oak Bell dated 1636, wow. Oh, look at that, there's some carved stuff on there. <laughs> I'm going to continue my walk around the monument now. So I say it's the first time I've been here since 2009. I'm just going to put a donation in the box. And, well, at first for a moment I thought, look, I thought the church had gone cashless. But actually there is a slot here to put money in. There you go. Imagine a church going cashless. Church is monitored rectory wardens, rector wardens. Rector wardens, that sounds rude. Sounds like the Viz comics, the bottom inspectors or something. Oh, here we go. Okay, so I'll just continue my journey. Yeah, the sun's come out, which is nice. Um, I can't actually get onto the you can't actually get onto the northwestern sector of the monument. Um by uh, f f this path, there's a path that goes down there. It's just sealed off with a gate. I didn't bother to show you. It's just a completely normal barrier with a warning sign on saying closed because of erosion control. But apparently you can get on onto the monument from the high streets. That's where I'm going to go now. I think that may be the only way you can get into the northwestern sector. But um, I'll like just show you some of it. The north eastern is the most interesting sector because it has the little small circles in the middle, in the middle of them called chapels. So uh, I'm going to head there now, come back to the hen shop later, but that's where we're going later on. I'm a bit hungry actually, I don't want any breakfast, so uh, I want to get something to eat at some point. Uh, but, uh, there's crows, I can hear there's lots of crows making noise, the animal will like that. Um, she's for a large crow collection, crow noise collections. Hmm. Cobblestone second hand books. Ooh. I think that's a place to visit at some point, I think. Have a little walk around. Oh, 
headline is calling me. But uh, first of all, I'm going to continue my tour of the monument. And there's more rain coming, you can see it there. So uh, that's why I'm keep glad I've got my waterproof on. But uh, I'll just show, apparently you can you can get onto this this sector of the monument here from the from the high street, which is this basically this road here. <coughs> And I'll just have a quick look at it because, like I said, the most interesting bit is is the northeast sector. You've never been, you really, you, if you've not been here before, it's really worth going to. It really is worth a visit. The energy of the place is really amazing. It's like you can't you can't get in there. All right, I'll sod that. I'll go. I'll go here. Um, I'll just go quick straight onto the northeast. <laughs> Then cross the treacherous main road that goes the main road between Swindon and the sort of West Country area, devices, Trowbridge, etc. Goes right through this village. Anyway, here we are. You see, this is what's interesting. They have these like little they can have tie stone there. And you have like uh, these little chapels they're called. There's one other one over there. You have these little small you have these little small structures inside the main structure. Look at that. Look at that. Again, you can't get into this right now. I remember this one because when I came here on the summer solstice two, 2009, they were like, that's, 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 I don't know if they, they've always been er eroded, so I don't know if they, what they were originally shaped like. So they were, they've been, Obviously changed over time. They've been buried for a long time as well. Um, look at There's lots of natural rocks here, aren't they? Um, I came here, when I came here in 2009, there was a huge crowd of people here. Enormous crowds were here because this was the summer solstice. And, um, but then David Icke was here. David Icke turned up and Neil, Neil Hague. came over this way with all, all the David Icke Forum crew. This was after this is after we found the dead body. Although um, we had called the police, but they, they were the police they they sent a buddy the police came over here actually to to, to find us. But uh, by the way the guy he died of a drugs overdose he was he was um I had to meet his family um, at the coroner's court. Yeah he's very sad he died he, Died of drugs overdose. This guy. So amazing. What another interesting coincidence? Along with this guy, this guy died. One of the forum members died. That was odd. That Simon. That's his name, Simon. He. Uh, he was. Yeah, sorry, sad. He was known on the forum as. His forum name was simply Simon. And he wasn't that old. He was early forties. And he very suddenly died. But anyway, this guy who died in the church porchway came from Bridport, in Dorset. And he'd been kind of like uh, homeless for a while. He'd been wandering, nomadic, living, living a nomadic lifestyle. Got into sort of new age and things like that, and was did take drugs. But uh, well, it was probably an accidental overdose, they think the coroner. But um, what's interesting is that Bridport is the location for the previous year's David and Ike Forum meetup. And for me, that somehow didn't seem. It just. Anyway, we came over here. This is where it's roughly in this area. You can't actually get to it now because of these ropes. Because it's simply closed. But it was roughly in this area down here, in this in the little ditch between the hedge, the ditch between the hedge, the hedge that um, David Ike did a little tour. That's a second tour. Nostalgic. Yeah, that was before the. They were before the main. And um, of course, I was in a relationship with sort of Very, very happy. And I don't get the melody. This 
circle, this stone circle. South western sector, southeastern sector, sorry, of the monument. And um, have a look at that quickly. But this is like this this lozenge shaped hill and this gap in the mon there's a gap here obviously been made for the road, but there's like another gap here. That also is on the crater in, on Mars in Sidonia. It's also a direct correspondent. Which is, how is that possible? I mean how is that possible that on on a, another planet in our solar system there's a landscape that looks exactly like this landscape on, on Earth. Presumably the one on Mars is a lot older, by billions of years. It's, it's weird, it's very, very strange. There's a, there's a book called Two Thirds which is all about that, uh, which is about a theoretical, possibly a speculative work of fiction about what might, it might be the cause. And here we are, this is, all these steps have been put in, that's useful. That's the tree where Graham sat under when he took Datura and had this vision when he, at the beginning of Supernatural, if you read that book, Supernatural, which is an extraordinary book there. And on this side, you actually go to the top of the, you go to the top of the, it's really incredible how steep this bank is in the ditch, which was dug, presumably dug by hand, thousands of years ago. Really amazing. Yeah. I might just, I might just skip this bit actually. And I'm going to go back now and I look, have a look at the bookshop. Maybe have a maybe you can see someone I know there. Other people will be coming from Maria's talk. Which, this is it. I mean, I should, I should explain exactly what I'm doing here, shouldn't I? Yeah, I'm here to, uh, to the launch of Maria Wheatley's new book about Stonehenge. Now, you may have seen it because. But Maria was at Awakening, if you remember, last year. I interviewed her about it. And um, I, uh, she's, what she's going to do, she's going to do some book signings, sales signings, I'll buy a copy, get her to sign it. And also, she's going to do a little talk at 2pm, she's doing a little talk for us all. So she may even be in the Red Lion, actually, so we'll go and see her. But um, this new book on Stonehenge is quite, so really going to be quite interesting. Because she's an interesting lady, she knows... She knows all about this. She's kind of like studied it. It's become it's like her passion. That's a good shot, isn't it? Amazing. Yeah. And um, all these ancient monuments she knows about. She's now travelling to other countries and exploring the ancient monuments there. So um, I'm actually very curious to hear what she has to say. Very curious indeed. Okay, so uh, time to go to the Red Lion, I think. I'll check out that second-hand bookshop as well. Got plenty of time. Like I said, I'm not rushing today. That's why I got the bus. An ancient house. That's the house, this is the kind of house that American tourists think we all live in. Tudor facade. Really ancient thatching. You see that, look at the moss on the thatch. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, there's loads of 
place like another hippie. <laughs> you could spot it. Well, see, I mean, I quite like, I quite like hippies, actually. I suppose I'm a bit of one myself. <laughs> but not, as I said, I had a brief flirtation with a new age in the 90s and gave it up. My trip to the Findhorn community actually was the nail in the coffin of that. Um, so I'll maybe talk more about it in detail another time. But, um, yeah. Here is the Red Lion, so yeah. So it's really amazing. I think some of the people who come and live in a place like this, a lot of them are kind of, they have that frame of mind, they're in that kind of, they're in that mindset. This is the Avery's kind of, is a little bit of a, is a little bit of a, a mecca for people like that. Avery chap, head out. Different. This must be like a non-conformist church or chapel, as opposed to the big Anglican one. Like this little old place, yeah. Here we the Red Lion. Let's go in there, see if we see anyone we know. Here I am. I'm having a cider in the West Country, but we'll have that. Well, this is the inside of the. This is the inside of the Red Lion. I'll show you a little bit more later. There's a, there's a well somewhere. Uh, I couldn't find it actually, but if you. It's actually a real uh, well that goes down in the middle of the bar and you can look down into it. I just want to see if I can find it. This is it. I had to go up there to talk to the police. Here it's gone. But um, you can see here, it's not kind of... You have a meal here and um, there's the bar. This is like a new one. Very nice. There was some kind of event going on. We have these, these like the, the witches, the local witches or druids or something. There's the rain, the rainbow dress reminds me of that. The, remember the guy with the suit we met in Glastonbury? It reminds me of him. Anyway, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm pretty hungry actually. I'm gonna. We'll take a walk down to look at that bookshop, and I'm also gonna see. I think there's a there was a, like a vegetarian restaurant down there, so I may see if I can get something there because I'm a little bit. I'm, I am still a little bit hungry. And, um, if I don't get anything now, I won't be getting anything until after Maria's event, maybe not even in Avebury, so... I'll go sort that out now. I'm going to walk back down here. It's a pretty normal bookshop I went in there, and I, it's mostly normal books. I saw a couple of UFO books, though, some sort of, lots of New Age books, so... Um, which is, I suppose, what you would expect in a place like this. This is the shop. Yes. I'll have a look at that later. That's the place I'm going to eventually, the hen shop. But right now, I have to see if I can find somewhere to eat somewhere. If you can eat in there, there's food you can buy in there. Hopefully there will be. I did say they had an ice cream sign, but I want something a bit more substantial than ice cream. But apparently there was a place you can get a meal here, somewhere around here. Uh, but they've done it up nicely. They've got these nice... They've got these nice... They've widened this pavement area with these little bollards, which is nice. You can get milk there. Um, yeah, I can, this place has a, has a nice energy to it. I always feel myself becoming more invigorated as I, as I, find my, as I, as I move around here. But <coughs> very different, for example, to well, Stonehenge. I, mean, I like Stonehenge. It's an amazing place. But it doesn't, it has a darker energy to Avery than to Avery, I'd say. I mean, Maria may well disagree, and she loves Stonehenge. And I do too, in a way. But it's, um, for example, there's a, a cafe and shop, that's where I want to go, down here. Um, so, for example, um, they found some bodies, there's lots of bodies buried there that date roughly to the time the place was constructed. They've died by violence, they've been beheaded, or they've received uh, traumatic head injuries and things like that, which has killed them. Um, that kind of thing. So, for that reason, I uh, maybe that's got something to do with it. I talked more about this in my... If you watched my video about when I went to Devon. Yeah, that was a very, very sort of like... Un, one of my more ungrounded moments, I think, when I went to Devon. When I went to the... To, to sky watching with Diana Windsor, or well, Sherry to give her a real name, she's, she's now uh, self-doxed. That's, that's what I told you about earlier, see that's the gate that's completely closed off this whole thing. So, uh, 
Well, everyone else is, if everyone else is ignoring it, I will as well. <laughs> huh? it's, yeah, they, they, I, I didn't know you could get in here. It's, it looks like it was all sealed off. Yeah, but, uh, it's all broken off out right there, but it looks right. like it's about hammer down, so we're running for the oh, shot. I don't, I don't blame you, mate. Yeah, <laughs> I'll do the same. Yeah, there's more rain coming, guys. It's been squally sort of showers, all very heavy showers, actually, all day. I'm now heading into this area. This is the old Avebury Manor. And you can see this is, you've got these old, these little axe, metal axe things on the sides of a building. That's a sign of a real old place. And there's a, there's your crystal shop and garden. So take a there. And oh, look over there is, oh, oh, it's getting a bit breezy. Oh, you can get some ice cream now. I'm, I'm looking for something a bit more substantial than ice cream. Well, that may be the museum, I think it's the museum. All right, judging by the smells, I think there's some food in there. So I'm going to go in there. Oh, well, it's a cup of coffee and a sandwich. It's, it fills a hole. There's no room inside. There's no room indoors, unfortunately. So I have to, I have to sit out here. Um, that's all right. It's not. It's not the best weather for sitting outside. But you know, it's not the end. It's not too bad. So I'm going to head, gonna head off in a minute across the hen shop when I've eaten this. And I'll just show you a little bit more of this area here. It's, just, it's a lovely little place, actually. It's a collection of buildings and various things. That's the Avery Museum there. And um, this is the old Avery Manor house. And um, where you saw me earlier, I was actually in the cafe. It's called the Circles Cafe. Circles, of course, could probably relate to the circular nature of these ancient monuments. But also, maybe crop circles. Look at the thatching on that roof. I don't want the. It's got like chicken wire over the top of it. Maybe that's to stop birds nesting in it or something. I don't know. <clears throat> and there's this strange conical structure here. There's this, there's this building. I might use. There's the doors open. I'm gonna have a quick look at it. But there is this um, conical structure with a de detached capstan. I was, honestly, if that was straight-sided and not conical, if it was like pyramidal instead of conical, I'd say that was an Illuminati pyramid. Um, <laughs> so harking back to probably the, the first video I ever made on the Panmo TV. Um, Yeah, there's this, there's nothing over here. That's the cafe over there. It's a lovely little location. There's a pond just there, you see. And here there's a... Let's have a look what's in here. Oh, there's actually, there's nothing in here. What is in here? There's, there's a bench, there's benches. There's these holes in the, there's these little holes in the wall. There's benches so people can sit. And there's not these little, there's these holes here, I don't know what these are for. These are pigeons, do pigeons live in here? Yeah. It's like a pigeon hat. Is that, are there some instructions? Are there, are there, are some, are there some, some information? Is there, did you say there was some information? Mm. No, I can't see oh, it. Right. Mm. Well, I don't know what that is then, but I think it's probably a pigeon pigeon loft. Not a pigeon loft, just a pigeon place. Mm. But it's, I don't know what it is. <coughs> now, if you look over here... That's the church we were in earlier. You see that? Oh, you get great crested newts here, look. And that is the church we were in earlier. Yeah. It's a lovely little spot here. I suppose the newts will be in the pond. I'm guessing. Oh, there right, we go. Okay, here's the wildlife pool. Please do not disturb. I assume this is where the newts live. Hmm. Very nice. This is the bank here, this is the northwestern sector and the bank and the ditch and the, of the henge. And um, there are two tree stumps here. Well, have to count the rings. Why do they cut these? Why, why are there two trees here and they cut them down? Why is that? There's the rest, that's where the rest of the bank goes, you see. They built that house where the bank is. They've actually, some of the bank has been destroyed to build that house. But this was the. Uh, <coughs> See how it went along. Obviously some of it was demolished as well to build the manor.
This is the hen shop. Very nice. I've been here before actually. They've got like a little meditation room upstairs, I remember. And um, I came with Miles and a few other people. Got a lovely garden here. And this is what we're going to go and see. Book signings. Maria Wheatley Stonehenge. That's what we're here for. That van there, right, I've just met up with Jojo. Now she, she doesn't like appearing on camera. But it's, it's one of these strange events that sort of happens. But it's not that strange when you think about it. Um, <clears throat> I met with someone called, uh, well she's known online as Jojo. I won't tell you her real name. But she's like one of the most dedicated members of the, the David Icke Forum Circle. We still meet up now. And... Um, she was here in that 2009 meetup I was telling you about earlier, where we found the dead body in the church. She was there. And um, she's been at lots of other meetings I've done. And I just met up with her. She just turned up with her, like, she's got, I haven't, seen, I haven't seen her for a few months, but she's like, um, she's in a van. She's, <coughs> she's, she's got a new boyfriend and she's living with him in a van. And she's moving to this area. It's really nice to see her again, because she's like a really old friend. She's like a really, really old, old mate, you know, someone from the original David Icke Forum. And, um, it's just, I mean, I, she said, fancy meeting you here, she said, and I, and I said, it's not that remarkable, really. I mean, um, when you think about it, because, like, this, this sort of place draws, it draws in recalcitrants and free thinkers like a hoover bag. I, I knew I'd see someone I knew here. I knew it. I'd have to bump into someone I knew. And uh, so I bumped into Joe, Joe, which is really nice. Um, they've got an old phone box here. Oh, this is like, this is like Glastonbury. They've got an old phone box. It hasn't been turned into a, a library, a little mini library. Yeah, look at this. When following orders becomes a crime, where do you draw the line? Yes, good point. And we all know what that means, don't we? Yes. Oh, this is a lovely old phone box. A bit of nostalgia there, ladies and gents. Me standing in the phone box <laughs> at Glastonbury telling you about the speaker that was just there in 2010 here. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go back out now and I'm going to... I mean, Maria's actually not there, but... Um, Maria's not there at the moment, but um, hopefully she'll turn up later. The, the, the event she's at doesn't start until, I think, 2 o'clock. So we've got at least, I think, another hour or so. I'm going to have to go off for another wander. That's that book I told you about, Two Thirds of History of Our Galaxy. It's actually, you know, David Myers, David Percy, not Mary Bennett. But this one is Mary Bennett and David Percy. Alien Intelligence on the Pathway to Mars. That one, Dark Moon, Apollo and the Whistleblowers. That's all about the Apollo detective stuff. There's some great stuff here. There's some great books. I did buy a book here from when I was here last. I came here with some people, so I think it was Miles and a couple of other people. Mm. You get the entire Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh, you've got to have them, haven't you? Your foes, there's little small mini guides here. These are good. All these different all these different subjects, logic, that's a, that's a very essential one, I think. Nature spirits, that's equally essential. I've got that in the Mayan calendar. Mm. You can pause to read these guys, but yeah. Incredible. This is amazing, they have crystal alien heads. It's not like the Indiana Jones thing. Look at that. Amazing. Little grey heads. Star fairies. Little stones from the UK. Of various kinds. Dragons. Little dragons and skulls. And then they look like these ones. These are called crystal beings. They call them on the doors. These are crystal beings. Amazing. Look at that, it's a lovely amethyst. When, there's another one I'll show you in a minute. There's that amethyst portal kind of thing. Isn't it? Be to read this book for ages. Jerry Kerry, Louise Thomas, and Chris Morton. This is an old Native American legend tells of 13 crystal skulls the size of human skulls that were sent to collect information about the origins and destiny of humanity. 
The legend said that one day, at a time of great need, all the crystal skulls would be rediscovered and brought together. That's like in the Indiana Jones thing, isn't it? Um, that happens in the Indiana Jones. I mean, I think that that film is underrated. I think it's my favourite one of the series. Um, but there's a book by Amanda Scott, whom I told her about the Boudicca stories. Oh, I've got a copy of it somewhere. I think it's out of print. And of course there's a map of all the different countries of the UK and their regions. Tells you where they come from. Yeah. It's like this. This is like a window of amethyst. That's amazing, isn't it? But that's my favourite, look at that. Well, I've got my book. Here we go. Need two rounds for this, hang on a sec. I've got my book, which I'll get Maria to sign later. I'll just come out to go to the toilet and um, I'm going to go back there now because it's starting in about a quarter of an hour. So, uh, yes, yeah, so the time's gone, gone quickly. Okay, I'm out. Um, we, Maria spoke for about an hour and I'll say more about her talk later. But um, it was fascinating, absolutely fascinating stuff. And um, I didn't get a chance to get her to sign my book, but I might get a chance later. But um, either way, I mean, I've, it's, it's really, really interesting. I bought another book as well. I bought that Crystal Skull book. I'll show you more about that later. But uh, yeah, the, the event took place. I mean, I've actually been there before. In the attic above here, there is like a, um, it's like a kind of sanctuary space where um, there's like a projector and there's little folding chairs. It's all carpeted and you've got to take your shoes off when you go up there. It's like a mosque. Uh, you've got to take your shoes off. And um, and that's obviously, it helps with cleanliness. It's also because it's acknowledgement that it is a kind of a special place, um, which is, you know, spiritually clean as well as physically clean. And, um, and Maria did her talk. Now, what's happening now is um, we're, going to, we're going to wait for a few more minutes. Maria's coming out in about quarter past, which is in about ten minutes' time. And she's going to take, she's going to do what she does best. Um, she's going to take us on to a part of the monument that, where apparently there was an old building that, be, even before the stones were put up, there was an old structure, a wooden structure, and she's going to show it to us. And she's going to show us where that was. Um, I think this is Maria's forte, is like the, the courier tour guide kind of role that she plays. Um, and so I don't know if I would have filmed that. I couldn't, obviously I couldn't, I, I wasn't going to film her talk without permission and I didn't film in the, in the sanctuary because it's, it's sort of like a sort of sacred space kind of place. But um, hopefully I'll get some clips of her, of her tour. So uh, I'll let you know. Ladies and gentlemen, there's Maria. Um, we're beginning the tour. She's going to take us to what she calls the Southern Inner Circle. So um, that'll be very interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to this. The sun has come out, the sun's out at the moment. So um, it remains to be seen whether we can dodge enough showers before this time. I don't think it's going to take very long. At the moment, it's like, it's actually very nice at the moment. Also, the wind's gone down a little bit. It's not as windy as it was earlier, which is actually a relief. So yeah, pray to the weather gods. Okay, we're approaching the southern inner circle, that's what it's called. It's, these are sometimes also called chapels. Um, there's another one there, it's like these little small stone circles inside the big one. Um, during the time this monument was used as a ceremonial site, these were probably used for special ceremonies, possibly uh, an elite member of the priesthood uh, only could use these. <coughs> that concrete marker stone that's the obelisk stone which was placed there by Alexander Keeler in the 1930s and where he found a stone hole in those stone he did the other concrete place that stone setting over there is incorrect it is not how the ancients did it we'll look at that in a moment so imagine the long skull people here it's the Neolithic uh, Orthodox dating, 3100 BC, they erect the obelisk stone 
and they erect the coastlines. Well, that's what the archaeologists tell you of phase one. Preceding that, what stood by the obelisk stone, now depicted by that, it was originally a square setting. See those stones? It was a square setting surrounding the obelisk stone. Everything in the ancient world had meaning. Nothing was by chance. So they built a huge square wooden temple. Okay, that's the first phase. Highly painted, I think, like I showed you. And then they decided to dismantle that after about 500 years. It's on a healing triple spiral. And <coughs> then what they did is they literally drew around it with stones. And that's why you have that structure there, the called the Z stones. There. And we can see them all as small, can't we? When Keeler was actually digging there back in the uh, 1920s, he found huge stone holes. Well, what does a huge stone hell insinuate? A big stone. Yeah. yeah? And so what he realised was Keeler, which he did in his notes, his notes are going to go online. Have you heard about the Avery Project? Every single person that's contributed to the reconstruction of this monument, of which there were 328 people, um, their notes, it's all online. 50% is already there, 100%. Let's see if his mistakes go online. <laughs> so what he found was a very large socket hole and a small one, a large one and a small one, a large one and a small one. So you had height change. He also noticed the colour change. The smaller stones were reddish and the large sarsens were white, like silver colour. So it was a red and white uh, enclosure there, which again you can get through paint as well. And I see them being painted as well. And uh, they would have used it for makeup, they would have used it for numerous different uh, things. So that's the sacred healing temple. And they had, like I said, they had that at every single stone circle. They had an indoors originally and then an outdoors, just like at Orkney. So we can go and feel the uh, energies uh, in a moment. And what uh, it was noticed about 80 years ago in terms of earth energies, uh, that it weaves in and out of some of those stones. And I'll show you that weaving effect. And I think that's how they would have kind of interacted by the stones and then entered through an entrance. And I'll show you where the entrance was to this amazing timber healing center as well. And there was another healing center just outside of Stonehenge, two stories high, yeah? So we think of everything being low, but who's to say it wasn't high? Do you see what I mean? If you think outside of, uh, of the box, and they go over and experience that, they whoops, oh. they'll fall down the hole. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> we well, couldn't hear that, but Maria was just telling us where the door this building was um, and how this is actually out of alignment this this is like would have been one of the walls of the, of the building but it's sort of out of alignment it was just a dwelling place at Avebury Henge a dwelling place really I think you know that whatever they took that pot there for this was a sacred healing zone yeah and I think that's what they did do you know what preceded West Kennet Long Barrow, anyone? What inspired the Long Barrows? Anyone? The Long Skulls? So why do you think West Kennet is the shape it is? Any ideas? No? Okay, that's all good. Because preceding West Kennet Long Barrow, there was a long house. Houses for the living and houses for the dead. So the reason why West Kennet is there, because it had a building like this beforehand. Yeah? Mm. So again, we're thinking of layers of activity, not just one time span. So for 500 years, this stood. For 500 years, the long scale people came here. Then they decided to dismantle it. Then they decided to put up that stone there and the coast stones. Okay? They're the central. 500 years passes again. They must have been like 500 years. <laughs> 500 years pass again. And then the beaker culture come here, the round skulls. And they decided to encircle the stone circle. Yeah? 
So that's 500 years difference, a thousand years to our, to our building. Yeah? Then they thought, well, I think what's going on is the Round Skull people were saying, I'm going to make this monument mine. Yeah? I'm going to make it mine, and so they are added to it. 450 years, this is archaeologists' data. I was going to say 500, I thought better not. They do actually say 500. Uh, 500 years after that, they build the outer stone circle. Yeah? And then even much later than that, then they add the avenues on. And so again, we're looking at a monument in different eras. Do you see what I mean? And yet everybody comes here and they think, oh, the stone circle is contemporary to this. No, it isn't. That's like me saying, oh, I know what it is like to go to war with the French in 1066. I think the cultures were so far apart. Do you see what I mean? They, they didn't relate to each other like we relate to our uh, history. So I'm going to show you the, where the triple uh, spiral is because you get this at numerous different uh, monuments. Marie is going to demonstrate some dowsing. First stone in the famous avenue, you can see these stones leading to Avery. In ancient times, this was used for professional processions, I think. actually not professional this was not used for processions it was considered sacred and people generally used they would they walk on the outside of it and use these stones for astronomical observations so that's uh, so yeah i've made other mistakes in this record so i'm sure just heading now further down this little avenue trying to keep dry I didn't hear much of what Maria was saying because it was the wind, but yeah. there's something special about the far side of the stone at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Do you hear an axe mark? Yeah, but it's not an axe mark. Yeah. So this, this is a. Something yeah, else. obviously it's a stone, oh, not wood. But I asked her to ask her later, I think, if you get the chance. But you can see, like, there's a special shape here on the bottom of this stone at the entrance to the, to the West Kennet Avenue. Oh, sorry. And here is the well. You go down, you look down there, 
Oh, and it goes, oh, it goes, oh, you can actually see the water. See you guys. You can actually see the water there, look. 86 feet deep and believed to be at the last resting place of at least one unfortunate village. Oh my god. Oh my god, look at the size of the village. Wow. Well, 1600. Oh yeah. 86 feet down. Yeah, this is, this says all about it there. Uh, unbelievable. Can't see 86 feet down. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm in a car now with my friends Martin and Abigail, who I have met a couple of times before at Bases, the Bases Project. They were at this event with Maria. And they're going to give me a lift to devices, which is very nice of them. So, uh, yes, that's good. I don't really want to hang around waiting for buses at this on this evening. It's too cold. Well, uh, welcome to devices, ladies and gentlemen. I'm now heading for the basic project headquarters. Um, I actually don't know if my husband will be there or not, but um, he did say I could stay there tonight. Uh, luckily, I've got a key to get in. Um, I borrowed it off him. He's never asked for it back. So, uh, comes in handy I've actually as you know from previous videos I've actually turned up uh, when he's not there before and sort of picked up the post and things for him so uh, yeah I just bought him a, a bottle of wine hope he'll like it I uh, I mean you all know this because he's, he's talked about it on his videos Come on, he has talked about it on his videos but uh, Miles uh, suffered a terrible bereavement a couple of weeks ago and uh, that's Anne Hess and he has been and he's, he's I know yesterday he was in Norway at a funeral now um, I don't know whether he's what time he's coming back or whether I think he's coming back sometime this evening he may already be back but um, you know he may want some company he may want somebody there and so That'd be nice for him. He, uh, he did say I could stay. So I'm heading there now. Still bitterly cold. I mean, I um, I could have gone back to Oxford actually because I met um, Sophie the Porter's poet and her husband and their, and their little kid. And we, I just met up with them in the Red Lion just after Maria's talk. Um, I could have gone back with them because they live in the Oxford area. They could they would have offered me a lift back to Oxford. But you know what? I need I need to decompress spiritually after being at Avebury and going straight home back into Normieville would be a bit like coming up for air too soon and getting the bend getting the spiritual bend so I need to get into the decompression chamber for a little while that's what I'm doing by staying at my unless he's, unless he's changed the locks and I can't get in in which case I have to go back on the bus um, but uh, I hmm he shouldn't have done that, I don't think. Anyway, so I'm now heading towards the base project headquarters. Right, well, I'm at the base project headquarters. It's about, um, it's almost ten, it's almost seven o'clock now, ten to seven. I'm, um, I think Miles, I've just uh, texted somebody who knows about these things and apparently Miles has probably just landed, which means he'll be here in a couple, about two hours. Um, I'm, I, I feel actually very moved right now and I'm not gonna what's happened is Miles has what 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 I find very moving is that here at the basis project headquarters Miles has created something something this is I think this is a little bit private and I'm not going to describe it to you and I'm certainly not going to show it to you but Miles has created a little a little memorial for Anna Hess and I find that very touching, very touching indeed. So yeah, I'll um, I wish him all the best. I wish him I'll be seeing him soon, and um, I don't know. I hope I can bring him some comfort anyway. I've got him a bottle of wine. That's something, and I'll get him anything else he needs. I'm with Miles, and Miles is just ahead of us. We're walking down this dark alleyway. Uh, he's come back from his trip, and. Um, we're doing this, you, you've seen this alleyway in daylight, we're now going down it in night time. Apparently there were very nasty, uh, sort of like carnivorous rabbits who particularly like ex-hospital no, porters. They're, they're, um, they're man-eating uh, feral badgers. Oh dear. Right. This is like the Australian drop bears, you know. Yeah. Who, which are real as fuck, let's face it. 
Anyway, this is a very spooky place at night, this alleyway. Well, uh, the other thing that this path is used for was to bring people from the local jail up to be hung. This way you come. This is where you come from. That's right, yes. Across, uh, that's a famous um, place, isn't it? I mean, for all I know, sometimes those ghosts manifest, particularly on dark nights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm... Uh, particularly on nights like this. I'm feeling really, really not scared right now. Whew. But yeah, it's true that uh, we've, we've... I've already told the viewers about that crossroads, that place. There was a crossroads where they used to do the executions just at the top of that road there, leading towards the... The Broadleys area, so them, yeah, and, and uh, that's it. So this is the the jail was up this way. We've seen we've seen that before. Eh? So well, actually, uh, mm -hmm. Ben, if you're this, if you're if you are unruly tonight, you might find you're locked up in it. It's the time locked up. That's right. Well, as long as they don't have their practice hanging for being drunk and disorderly anymore. But anyway, uh, it's it's a spooky area. It's quite a short walk. We go over the railway bridge in a minute. And then we come out by the church and we're in Devizes. I mean, Devizes is a lovely place, I mean. Well, we're actually in Devizes. Uh, we are, and the central Devizes, I mean, the city centre, or well, the town centre. I mean, Devizes is, is, is it's, it's a lovely place. There's nowhere's more than about 20 minutes walk from anywhere else. Well, so, ben, I, th I think you'd be okay in terms of being hungry. There's no hope strong enough to hold you up for more than by the second. That's true, yes. The violence used to be in a big fat gear. Dreadful comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that. Um, uh, Miles has found a new spiritual home as well. It's a, the uh, Southgate Inn has proved itself unworthy of his oh, divine it's presence. All oh, right. So, uh, wh what's the name of the pub we're going to, Miles? Well, hopefully we might get to the taps. The taps, right? Brand new. It's in the Pepper Mill Hotel. Right. right. One, two, the taps. Let's hope it serves more than just water. And I guess it's a shot of our beers. Cheers, Miles. <laughs> Down the hatch. Oh. Oh, I just enjoyed the very uh, relaxing here. I've just come back from Norway. We've had a beautiful funeral in Norway uh, for the late Anna Hess. It's a huge shock to everybody concerned. So I'm just off the plane and I'm having a couple of beers. Yeah, that's the, fair enough, mate. I don't blame you. Yeah, we're in the Lamb in um, Devizes and we're just having, having a drink. It's on the kind of like a so rest in peace, Anna Hess. Yeah, it's a massive shock to everybody concerned. Very. Well, uh, good morning from the Basis Project headquarters. It's not a lovely morning, but I said that yesterday, didn't I? Uh, I slept pretty well, although I've got a slight hangover, not too bad. Uh, Miles has got a bad stomach from the, the ale and he's uh, advised him to leave it alone last time. Anyway, having a cup of tea and I'm starting the day with the what's cool tart of course. Eric Burleson and yes. He's a great wake up that guy, I must say. You know, he's like a he's like espresso. So uh, well uh, I'm looking forward to today. Well I suppose I should say a few words about Maria's talk from yesterday, which I haven't reviewed yet. Um it was really, really, it was really interesting. I mean, we we went into this place, the hen shop I showed you. There's actually a room above it. I've been there before. I've been in, I've, I've been to events there before. Uh, the shop back there's a, a place you go into, and there's very thick carpets, and they ask you to remove your shoes when you go up there. So you you, you have to take your shoes off. It's like a mosque. It's like a sacred space. You got to like um, you got like you feel you're entering somewhere special. And you go up there in your socks or bare feet, <clears throat> and it's just this big room with, with a, uh, like big thick carpet. And I, I didn't film up there. They, I mean, I wasn't going to film Maria's talk, and they don't let you. They ask you not to film up there, so I didn't, of course. But it's like you just come to the top, and there's this space under the roof, like an attic, and it's it's quite big actually. Um, and we got out some folding chairs, but there wasn't enough for everyone. <clears throat> it was literally, first it was standing room only, loads of people standing at the back, including Raven, Maria's daughter. And then more people turned up, and they were crowding around, sort of sitting in the aisles. And then some more people turned up, and they were crouching in the stairwell, leading up to the attic. <clears throat> this included Sophie the Porter's poet, and, and Chris, her husband, and their baby Joe. And... It was like they couldn't even get in in the end. I didn't. I didn't actually know they were there until later. But um, 
they they made a last minute decision to, decision to go along, and um, and Maria just talked about her research, and it's it's similar to what she talked about before, but it's it's she added some new things that I hadn't heard before, and she talked about the various barrows she's been researching, and she actually went on to the, funnily enough, a lot of there's a, the richest collection of old ancient burial sites in Britain. In, indeed, they're very rich in the in England, of course, and, and Scotland and Wales. But the richest collection is in Wiltshire on the Defence Training Estate on Salisbury Plain. And um, Maria doesn't think it's a coincidence that that happens to be where the Ministry of Defence purchased all that land like a hundred years ago as, as a training and as a training as a training centre for soldiers. I mean, it is the, the largest land troop, uh, land forces training area, I think, in Europe or something like that. And, um, and but she got managed to get special permission. She was even helped by a military policeman. She was driving along and she almost got arrested and she said, I've come to look for long-skulled people. And he said, follow me. And he let her onto this place where there's this old barrow. But he's like Area 51. And these long-skulled people appear all over the world. I mean, like the... the in Egypt, she found them in Egypt. There's even sculptures from ancient Egypt of long-skulled people, and um, they found these sarcophagi. And there is at, at the Saqqara pyramid. It's very one of the oldest pyramids, older than the Giza pyramids, and um, and they're, they're they're everywhere. And it's it's like an open secret in the world of um, of, of ancient ancient mysteries and archaeology. It's it's like like I said, she went to Oxford to view these things, and no one had looked at them since 1928. Um, and there was a one thing you also get it appears in the barrow is retainer burials. Now retainer burials are where a living person will enter the tomb with the whoever is inside. You saw this with the pharaohs. There was several people were in the tomb with ver with various people. I don't know if it's Tutankhamun, but some of them actually had people in the tomb with them. And it's it's often described as human sacrifice. Although as it happens, it appears that the retainers were volunteers. They actually chose to to enter the tomb with the with the with the king. Or in this case, there's a there's a huge barrow in in the West Country which appears to be for a queen, um, a very obviously a very politically powerful woman who um, was buried with a lot of jewellery and things like that. And there were several retainer burials with her, and it appears to be um, they're volunteers. They've deliberately choose to say to go in there and die and enter the duat. As they call it, the Egyptian, ancient Egyptian heaven, to enter the duat, the afterlife, with the pharaoh. Um, and there's there's others as well. There's one. There's some long skull people found in Yorkshire, and there's one. There's also long skull burials at a place called Stony Littleton. And these and the archaeologists, some archaeologists, dismiss this as deliberate misshaping of the head so they like, they use special boards and bindings to make the head a particular shape that is practiced actually it was practiced in Egypt it was practiced in ancient America but like the Paracas skulls these are not boarded they, they grew like that it's like the star child skull you know that's that's not a deformity that's it actually the star child skull actually grew the way it did um, and then um, what happened at some point there was um what they call the beaker culture, which is um, the people who flourished round about um, 5000, 4000 BC, or 5000, basically 5000, 4000 years ago, that is 3000, 2000 BC, were not actually the people who, f who first started constructing Stonehenge and Avebury. They, they developed it afterwards. But they were they actually displaced the long skull people. Although although apparently there seems to have been there seems to be a coexistence for about five hundred years between the two types of people. And then it appears that there was some kind of genocide, and then the long skull people were, ex were exterminated, um, and the round skull people took over, and they continued the work on the various places. And there was also miscegenation. Apparently there was there are in, in fact. There are probably people today, round skull people today, who are, who contain, who who have it within them, long skull DNA. And this must include the, the British people. It must include the English, Welsh, and Scots. Uh, oh, by the way, if you think to yourself, well, what are round skull people then? What, who, who are they? Well, if you want to see a specimen, just look into a mirror.
It's us. We are the round skull people. No, I don't. I don't feel any guilt about that. You know, I don't. Historical guilt is something that I, I think has been exploited very much in recent years. Reparations, take the knee. Oh, I'm an evil white male and all that shit. So I don't go in for that. But um, oh, interestingly, um, there was there was a hybrid buried at Windmill Hill. They found a hybrid grave at Windmill Hill of someone actually sitting up in the grave, which is unusual. Normally, people are lying in the grave, but this was a, a body placed sitting up. There are many placed in what they call um, constricted positions, that is the fetal position, as if they're, uh, it's a kind of rebirth symbol, but this one was sitting up in a grave, and it was a long skull person. Um, Maria has been banned from several churches. <laughs> she didn't go into details, but apparently she got into a horrible argument with, uh, with this lady vicar. Um, who sounds, well, Maria describes her as really mean, not, not, not like Dawn French's character in The Vicar of Dibley, I can tell you that. And this, this lady, or this, this woman, really had a go at Maria and sent her some nasty emails, and then Maria was forbidden from entering several churches. I don't know why exactly. Um, um, now, there's a th something called Code 12, which is by the makers of Ancient Aliens, and you get it on Amazon for a couple of quid, and it's all about this, and I, I'm thinking of maybe purchasing that. Uh, Maria is in it, along with um, Georgia Sukalos and Brian Forrester. Uh, I met Brian Forrester, he was at UFO Truth. Maria has been around the world. She's been all over North America, she's been around the Mediterranean as well, doing her tour. She's been, she does an annual tour with Kerry Cassidy to Egypt, which that's another thing on my bucket list. And she's been to Sardinia. You know, now, and, and there's some really amazing things in Sardinia, this little island in the Mediterranean. Now, um, what's, what's, it could be, oh, it could be in Sardinia, I heard this, they've got, they're very ancient, racially, they're very, very ancient people. They, they have, like, a lot of very ancient DNA in Sardinia. That's what I heard, that racially, they're the most ancient people in Europe. Oh, by the way, um, yeah, then Maria <clears throat> did what she does best. And, I mean, basically, you saw it. She took us out and did a tour of the site. I mean, she, uh, as a courier, as a tour guide in the open air, you know, she excels at that, and um, that was really good. Despite the horrible weather, um, that was fantastic. I really enjoyed that. Well, to be honest, it, it only got really horrible towards the end. It could have been worse. So, um, so thanks very much to Maria f for a really, really good afternoon. It was really fantastic. Thanks to Sophie, the Porter's poet, and Chris, her husband, and the little baby. And thank, thanks very much to my my new friends, Martin and Abigail, although I have met them before. Um, but they're a couple who, uh, they're this couple, um, they, didn't, they didn't want to appear on camera, but it's actually a really romantic story. They met, they, they, they were both single people and they weren't looking for dates, but then their eyes met across the crowded room. And, and you know, um, Tchaikovsky's Romeo and Juliet overture played in their ears and they moved towards each other like that. And, it was, <laughs> and, and do you know where it happened? In a restaurant in Paris on the Eiffel Tower? No, it happened at the Basis Project 2022 Christmas Seminars. Oh man, Barbara Cartland could write a story about that, couldn't she? So I'm really pleased for them, yeah. I just hope that happens to me, you never know. Maybe maybe at the next Basis Project conference, I will. that will happen to me. I hope so. Anyway, oh, it's a lovely morning. Um, now, Miles is going to the Glastonbury... Um, what's it called? alternative view conference i've not been to an alternative view conference since the enr crane days i'd like to go to this one but um I, i've decided not to i've decided to go home for because if i go to this one i won't be able to do the gas banner this evening and uh, you know listeners are waiting for me to do that and you know even if i could do it even if i could fit it in like go to the conference i'd have to leave when everyone else would be going to the pub and the, having dinner i'd have to leave and then and even if even if that wasn't the case i have to work on monday morning and Leaving, leaving Avebury is a bit like, you know when I talked about um, spiritual decompression? Well, with Avebury, it's like a bloody hangover. You know, you, not Avebury, um, Glastonbury. With, like Glaston, with Glastonbury, it's like a spiritual hangover. I mean, the, you saw how ungrounded I was when I was there with the Crafty Nihilist at, um, at the symposium. It, take, it, it literally takes three days of ice packs, of spiritual ice packs, to get over Glastonbury. I can't just go straight back to Glastonbury, get in front of the microphone and do the gas spanner. It would just be... It, it would be uh, <clears throat> too much of a culture shock. And I want to do a good job for the gas spanner listeners. 
Um, and one of one of them was one of the, as I said in the last video, one of the guys who was on the the tour with Mark Devlin yesterday. He was a loyal, dedicated Gas Spanner listener. So, uh, so friends of the Spanner, I can't let them down. So I'm going to go home um, sometime this morning. I might have breakfast here actually somewhere before I leave. So, but Miles is going to head off. Um, I, I might if he doesn't have to wait for me, I can lock the house up for him. But he's just having breakfast right now. This has this lovely picture of Amelia Earhart. It's a painting by a painting. The local artist. Yeah, written, uh, created, painted by a local artist. And uh, of course, uh, if you watch Reggae, you'll, you'll know, if you watch my MH370 videos I did a couple of weeks ago, you'll know that they possibly have found her plane after 87 years. So it's the, um, it's actually not Ocean Infinity, it's this other guy, um, Tony Romeo. He may have found it. We'll have to wait and see. All right, I'm uh, here at the Basis Project headquarters. I'm on my own again, and Miles has gone off to the Glastonbury Alternative View, and um, and I'm sort of just waiting. I'm going to leave in a minute and uh, head home. I might actually have a uh, breakfast up at the Big Society or Weatherspoons. Whether I do or not is actually going to depend on how long I have to wait for a bus, because I think I only have two hours or something on a Sunday. So I'm not going to sit around by a bus stop for that long. I'm going to... Um, I will go to the. I'll, I'll go and have some breakfast if it's or, or something like that. Um, anyway, um, Miles is headed off. Um, I hope they, everyone who goes to Glastonbury, AV has a good time. I've not actually been to Alternative View since Ian died, um, so I don't know what they're like these days. And as you know, I've been to many. I went to four of them when Ian was alive. But um, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, I I am dubious because. I mean, if they can make it a good, if they can make a good go of it without him, that'd be something. But for me, Ian R. Crane was AV, and any in the same way, we couldn't really continue with the mindset podcast after Gareth died. Um, was it the right decision to carry on with AV? I don't know. Um, if they can, it could be that they decided to continue it, which is in which case I wish them luck. Um, anyway. Miles was, I think he was going to take this book, but he's left it behind. This is um, by Elena Danan. Encyclopedia Galactica, Portraits of Star Nations. Oh, from Andromeda to Canis Minor. Interesting, Encyclopedia Galactica is actually a quote from Carl Sagan. Um, it's a bit ironic, but um, you can, it looks interesting having a flick through it. There's these very good illustrated pictures of various aliens, which are actually, they look strange, but believe it or not, pe people do report encountering these beings. There's some pictures of alien planets as well. Yeah, um, yeah, but it's as weird as these things may seem to be. They are, they do exist. I, I think these creatures do exist. They are seen by so many people, and they've literally been encountered all the time. Um, let's see, um, by people who had no connection with each other, people from very different cultural and racial backgrounds. Um, there is reality behind it, I think. Anyway, I don't know how, if I went outside to put some rubbish out and it's still cold, but um, never mind. I'll enjoy myself just like I did yesterday. So, um, Miles has got a great DVD collection here. I didn't show you these when I was not, I think the last time I did when I went through his shelf. The H.G. Wells' first Men in the Moon. That's, this is a good film, actually. Um, this is, it's, it's, what's weird about this, this is the, probably the first story of a moon journey by... H.G. Wells. Uh, the book is originally by H.G. Wells and interestingly it involves not a rocket but anti-gravity. The, the spacecraft that they use to go to the moon is powered by a substance called Cavorite which they paint on when it dries it turns into an anti-gravity shield. It's very 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 good film I do recommend this. It is a freebie, it is a freebie on YouTube I notice. But yeah, great stuff. More decorations, more decorations from the Basis Project headquarters, the crop circle thing there. And look at these lovely little tapestries. Silvery Hill, Stonehenge, and there's the Westbury White Horse. Come heading down the alley that Miles and I walked last night in the dark. Seems so much more benign in the in daylight hours, doesn't it? Um, well, it's about 25 past nine now. The next bus is not till five past eleven, so uh, decision made. I think I'm gonna have breakfast in big society. So I'm heading there now. This is what you get here. It's uh, 
It's not as cheap as Wetherspoons, but I'll tell you what, it's worth it. It's really worth it. I must apologise, this place is called New Society, not Big Society. I always get that wrong. But I'm here in this middle. I've got half an hour to wait now in this sweet little market town. I do love devices, I really do. <coughs> it's a wonderful place. Down there, the Black, the Black Swan Inn is where there was a Basis Project Christmas event where I had a time slip. That was quite extraordinary, that was. That was really amazing. Anyway, I've got to wait. I've got half an hour to wait for my bus, so uh, I will uh, wait. Look at that car there. Is that that's like an old? What is that? Oh, it's the old one, isn't it? Good condition. I don't see many of them. Whatever that is. I always thought these classic cars. Do you, remember, do you remember in Las Vegas where all those classic cars drove past me? I was very lucky there, wasn't I, to see them? Yeah. That's a real, that's a real blokey thing, that is, cars. It is. Anyway, I've uh, got a uh, kind of little wander around here for half an hour. Then I will get my bus. It was raining yesterday when we came up here. But um, it's lovely to see this lovely drive along this road here. And those, um, apparently the local name for those copses is Hedgehogs. I didn't know that, but that's what the people around here call them. You can see why. And of course, in one of these, I think it's one of the ones behind me we've already passed, there is this uh, monolith and, uh, and there's, a, there's a monolith and a, a barrow. And that is, if you watch the Avery Connection, that's actually part of the structures on Mars, kind of like a, a facsimile, you know, it's like a mirror, a Mars mirror, 14 to 1 scale, as I said earlier. And there is the Phallic War Memorial, you can just see it up there, on top of that hill there, overlooking Beckhampton. In summer, you get loads of crop circles here. <coughs> there is truly something divine about this landscape. That mural. <laughs> if that was in Oxford, that would be a part of my Oxford graffiti video. And that one there. Look at these. Look at this. sort of half finished, I think, that one. Oh, look at that. Oh, they're good, aren't they? So, uh, welcome back to Swindon. Um, and it's much that too. The weather is a lot nicer now than it was last time I was here yesterday. It's actually warmed up a little bit, which is good. Um, I'm just having a walk, just sort of stroll around before I get the bus to Oxford. I was going to sort of like take time to explore this town, have a look around, but. Um, I think I probably need to get home. I need to update her Padmo voice and prepare for the gas banner this evening. Um, also, the battery on my camera's almost run out. I might have to switch to my phone actually. So Swindon, um, the name, the name of the, the name of Swindon actually means town of the pigs, which sounds insulting. Although, really, pigs are lovely creatures. Pigs are actually really nice creatures, they're intelligent, they're sensitive, you look into their eyes, it's almost like a, a human or something, they have the same kind of skin as us, they actually have um, human-like skin, and they have subcutaneous fat, so we have small, our skin is more like that of a pig than it is of a, an ape, and um, yeah, they, they seem, they're not dirty, they just cover themselves with mud, because to stop them getting sunburned, yeah, anyway, I'm going to get my bus to Oxford. The nice thing about Swindon, there's a large amount of non-conformist folk art here and I've just showed you a little selection of it I actually saw some more uh, and I think it's really good it's of really high quality some of it is just like simple tags like this but um, generally speaking um, yeah that makes the place a nice that's a plus I think definitely a plus an example of some more look at this I saw this from the bus and I didn't sort of like it's really good isn't it that's very good, that's like a proper painting, that is. That's like the Marilyn Monroe one we saw earlier. Look at all the water flow in there, it's amazing. And the fox. This one is, I never say touch my things. Oh, <laughs> Mary, Bernie. All right, very good, aren't they? There's Paddington, you see, it's one of those, those grab things for toys. That's nice, isn't it? 
That has real dynamism. You can almost, it's almost got, you can almost see it moving. Very good. Now I should show you my souvenirs, and I don't have many because um, obviously I was only away overnight. Well, I got here, of course, 14 times. <coughs> I bought this to read while I was on my way. Batwing monsters. I like that. That's very, very interesting. And this is a book I'm reading now, I'm Cheating the Ferryman. Well, I've already showed you that, haven't I? Yeah, I've already showed you it. I've actually got through a little, quite a lot of it. I mean, you can see there. One of my New Year's resolutions was to read more, and so far I've been doing that. And this, of course, is The Mystery of the Crystal Skulls by Chris Morton and Kerry Louise Thomas. This is actually the book I showed you earlier, a factual bestseller, which I think may have inspired that Indiana Jones film, and also... Um, and also one of Amanda Scott's books. It talks about 13 crystal skulls which when brought together will release knowledge for mankind. Yeah. And of course, A Secret History of Stone, Don't Henge. Ancient Mysteries of Lost Civilizations by Marie Wheatley. The new book, which you've got a preview of, if you remember, Awakening. And um, there it is. And of course, dear Maria has signed it, which is nice. As far as the buses go, we are back at Osney Island and uh, the Oxford Roswell there. Big thank you to Miles and Maria. It's been a really, really it's a fantastic weekend. Done so much. And of course you, Pamelo TV viewers, for watching. Hospital Porters, pride and dignity. Stop the New World Order.